Hello and welcome to part 3, the final part in our cover based system series. In parts 1 and 2 we have currently set up our character to not just snap to cover and be able to crouch into cover, but also be able to move and follow along that cover's surface whilst remaining behind that cover. In this episode we're going to handle shooting behind cover, so when we pull the aim trigger our character will stand up and shoot above the cover at whoever you are aiming at, and when you let go of it they will snap back down and carry on covering. So let's jump in and get started. So to get our character to back away from cover rather than pushing the E key, uh, we need to go to our character's code obviously, and look at how we're handling the forward movement. So move forward here, and on here we're going to do a simple branch to detect whether or not we're in cover or not. We don't want to do this when we're not in cover, so it is cover, and put that into a branch, plugging that in. Like so. We then want to get another branch to determine whether or not we are moving backwards. So get move forward. And to know if we're moving backwards or not, this will be actually less than zero. So do less than and leave it as less than zero. And put that into that branch I mentioned. Now we'll only do this if we are holding down the back key. Or like S. Okay. So once it's done that, we're going to go into a gate. Now the reason why we're going into a gate is because we need to know how long we are holding down the key for. And whilst we are in there, it needs to be doing something. So on the gate, we're going to open it with the S key. So do S key, find the key input for S. So uh, pressed will go into open and release will go into close. So it will stop doing this next bit um, unless uh, we are, uh, if we do release the key. So we need to know how long we've held the key down for. So we're going to drag out the key and get input key. Uh, so apologies, you need to get the player controller first. Get player controller, and from there we can get input key down. Uh, put key to, uh, time down. The key will come from our key input, and we can use the return value here to determine how long we've held it down for. So if I've held it down for greater than one second, that's when I want it to branch off and let to do the stop cover. So put in the condition here, and I'm going to tell it to stop cover. Go. So let's test this out. If I push play, go up to the cover point, go into cover, and hold down S, it will back away from the cover. There you go. So the next thing we will do is make it so that when we hold down the aim button, he stands up over the cover. Now for this, I'm just going to lower my cylinder here, so he can shoot above it. So let's just lower that and test to see if that's a good height. Maybe it needs to be a bit lower. Yeah, a little, little bit higher, sorry. Higher. Okay. And go into there. So, so when I hold down right trigger, I want to be able to aim above the cover because this is not good aiming. Okay. So let's go through that. We need to go through the player character again. And we want to go to where we go to aim. Um, to find your aiming code. And on here we've got the start aim. Just simply just get in the, in the animation blueprint to start aiming. And, we're, and activate the camera for the aiming camera. And deactivate the play, current playing camera. So nothing special. But what we want to do is detect whether or not we should be able to stand up. So at the start of this we're going to do a line trace out. And that line trace is going to simply say yes or no you can stand or go into aiming basically. So line trace by channel will go into start aim and we're going to put the result returning node into a branch and it will only go do the following if this is false. Okay so if it doesn't hit anything that's when we want it to stand up. So the starting point for our line trace is going to be our get actor location. And 
we want to offset this by a certain height okay so we're going to add a value to this we're going to add a vector and we add a vector in the z more specifically of 100 and that's going to be a starting point so put in a start and as per usual the end point it can be this value plus another vector and that vector is going to come from the player camera so get player camera manager and you want to get the forward vector of this camera get the forward vector of the camera and for this we want to ignore um the uh the height of it we just want to it just go um not height of it the uh ignore the yaw of it ignore and just look at the x and y location direction of it so i'm going to split this value and we're going to multiply a uh, vector by a float so i'm going to drag this down from here do vector uh, multiplied by float and split this vector and x is going to, go to x and y is going to go into y so ignoring the yaw basically the z and that's because we don't want it to change its uh, its pitch basically uh, so without the pitch it will just go dead straight so here I'm going to check a value of 300 in the multiplication and that will go into our line trace like normal and I'm going to change the trace channel to cover and we don't need to do anything with the hip we just plug that in straight into the cast here okay so now we get to this point we can now check whether or not we're in cover so it is in cover and we'll do another check here and if we are in cover we want it to uncrouch so it'll stand up to shoot okay. the next we want to go to stop aim and this one's a bit simpler um, at the end of this we're just going to simply say um, it is in cover check that in the branch and we are in cover we want to crouch again so it crouches back down when we stop aiming Pile. let's have a look at that in game so i go up to the cover point and then hold down right trigger i stand up ready to shoot away let go and i crouch behind cover again so the last thing i want to tidy up here is a little bit of animation issue uh, that I notice my, I've got my aiming, got my aim offset doing their thing. But I don't necessarily want that to happen when he's behind the cover because it looks kind of odd aiming the gun around as I move the camera around. Okay, I'm aiming the gun, sure, but I'm not, we don't want it to happen. Okay, so to turn off that, we're going to go into my animation blueprint here and animation blueprint works as such i've got um a movement cache going on and then i'm caching that into an, another cache which is coming from the layered blend per bone and then now i'm adding or through that adding a the aim offsets for iron sights and hip placements so i want to blend the poses from this uh by ball and this one will be going actually into the false here it's true I'm just going to use the main cache that I've got here. Plug that into the true there. And the condition for this is going to be uh, two things. First of all, are we in cover? And secondly, is there aiming uh, done? So I've already got is aiming on here. So I can drag is aiming out. And from there, I'm doing and node. And the other option I'm going to check the, uh, is whether or not we're in uh, in, in cover. But it is aiming should be not, sorry, we should be not not aiming. So if not aiming and we're in cover. And the in cover is gonna be a variable in here. So we do another variable is in cover. And we're gonna plug that into our and there. And that's gonna be the condition for this blend poses by ball, which we'll plug into our aim cache there, which then feeds into our output pose. So this in, in cover needs to be set and that happens on the event graph over here. So on the event graph, quite simple. After we set the aim offset, 
I'm going to get my character reference, which I have here, already done for me. Get is in cover. And I'm going to set our animation blueprints is in cover. So they're synced up. Plug that in there. So now he shouldn't do the aim offset stuff whilst he's in cover. He should just be more neutral. Okay, so now the arms aren't doing anything weird. They're just sneaking around. Then when I go back up, I'm aiming. I've got my aim offset back on. So to show you how you set this up in your levels, um, here I've got a level that I got from the marketplace. And here's my character, which you just been making. And here you can see I've already placed a couple of our collision volumes. So, uh, cover volume, sorry. So I'm just going to add more cover volumes. So I'm going to add one to this cart here. I'm going to drag this onto our cart. And move that in there. And change the box's size to meet the size of our uh, cart, is it? Yeah, I guess it's a cart. And uh, move that there. There. And there we go. So you just place these wherever you want cover to be. And that way you don't get any weird issues with the shapes of the objects. Something like this, you'd get some weird normals coming off of it. So it's not the greatest. But with these cover volumes instead, you'll find yourself with a little bit better um, ex execution of it. Oh, it needs to be a little bit higher. Just make that a little bit higher. Over here. Going down. So. There you go. So you just place this around your environment, and there you go. So you could alternatively make all those things be visibility hits if you want it to affect everything in your world. So just change all those trace channels to visibility rather than cover, and that will affect pretty much anything in your world. However, as I said, you will find issues when you get more complex geometry with complex collisions. You may find that is not the greatest. And also, you may not want to actually add cover to everything. Um, this is a much better solution because it gives you a bit more control over and uh, the level design and a lot easier to test as well. And there are many other ways of doing cover. This is just one way. Uh, you could also use splines as a method uh, if you want to go through that route or you want me to go through that. Just let me know in the comments and I'll happily go through that as well. Uh, but yeah. And that brings us to the end of this mini series. Once again, I want to say thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their support and for voting for this mini series. If you want to cast your vote on the next video, head on to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey, where you can cast your vote from silver tier members and up. And don't forget, if you want the project files for this project and all my other projects, gold tier members and higher will also have access to all my project files as well. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.